I'm Chuck Reagan. I live in Grass Valley, California. I'm a fishing guide, I'm a musician, and I'm a dad. really busy obviously you know um, and just goes at a pace that most people don't go at he has a song that I just keep thinking about to reference like Nomad by Fate and I just think that it is even though he may not consciously realize it that subconsciously it is instilled in him to constantly be on the go I grew up in a Southern Baptist home my, my mama is uh a uh, ventriloquist who traveled in evangelism, and uh, she traveled the world, uh, spreading, spreading gospel, and and doing it through her, her, uh, her dummy, Ricky. <laughs> My father's PGA pro. Um, he was a U.S. Ryder Cup team player in 1963. Uh, my father relocated us. It always seemed like it was close to, to good, if not great, fishing spots. <laughs> Just a rotten little snot-nosed punk and who rebelled against the church and the state and authority and parents and everything. They put me in a, a program called the Life Program, and it was more or less like a a long-term treatment facility for you name it. I mean, runaways, drug addicts, sex addicts, like, and kids pretty much from 12 years old on up to 20 years old. I think I was, I think I was maybe 13 or years old or so when I went in there. And, you know, I was just young punk, like homemade tattoos and run away from home didn't do well in school and just kind of had enough of life altogether. I mean, being in that program, I mean, that's, that's where I started writing. We were required to every day write, keep a journal, and they were called, they were called MIs, uh, which stood for Moral Inventory. So, you know, by the end of the few years that I was there, I mean, we had stacks of them. And, and I think that program saved my life. Um, for me, it worked out. We feel so incredibly lucky to have this opportunity. We want to thank, we'll probably say it many times tonight, but we truly can't thank you enough. Something like this doesn't just happen every day. This is truly, truly incredible. Grinding for 300 days out of the year is hard and your family isn't there at the end of the day and you're not there for them. Red Eye last night uh, from Sacramento, Sacramento to LA to Detroit. Landed in Detroit 6.30 this morning. We got to leave right after the show around midnight. We got about a five hour haul to Kaneki, Kaneki, Kanaku. <laughs> Pick one. <laughs>
I just think it's been instilled in him. I think it's just a part of who he is to always be emotion. And I think that might be why he finds such solitude and peace out on the water, because water's always in motion. Everything just unfolded, and, and it all made sense. It was like this is this is this is why I was born. And until the evening, far from home. Uh, a lot of the lyrics and uh, some of the songs from The Flame and the Flood, just camping right over here and come out, spend a few days, fish all that, fish both sides of this. Certain flows you could wade, wade across right there, fish the inside run there. Even though I, I know I'd probably make more money than if, you know, I rode the boat. And then it's a question of like, well, what's more important? You know, you know, making making a making a good amount of money, or having the time. You know, seeing these pivotal changes in like the first most important years of a kid's life. 
through the jaws I have fought over in the mist, the crushing cascades through the torrent along the levees, the water. Musician or a fishing guy? <laughs> that's a that's a great question. I would uh, I would probably say a fishing guy. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Believe it or not, it almost seems a little more dependable than a life on the road, <laughs> and a, and a lot more healthy. <laughs> Carry me. 